we've created one of the largest opportunities royalty seen yet. This is the, uh, the current chopper in operation. It's an Airbus. It's a gorgeous chopper. have words to begin to talk about how excited I am about today's video. These, uh, these videos to me are, are like mementos, right? Uh, if you guys want to hear a small story, a little backstory. Back in 2018, I started doing really, really good with my uh, business and every major move I did, I got myself a watch. I have a lot of watches now, ironically. But this year, 2019 to 2020, there hasn't been a lot of really big, I mean, we've gotten a lot of cool things, you know? We bought the uh, 918, 918. Bugatti the, one. the red one. No, the, 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 Mansori. the Mansori one, that was actually where this watch came from. Mm. Uh, the white on white, you know? Uh, we've got the red one and we got the Koenigsegg, right? Some pretty cool things, had some pretty cool builds. Yes. But there cool. hasn't really been any business moves, right? We've bought a lot of cool stuff. And that's the start to story to this video. I don't think I'm gonna spend any more money on cool stuff this year. I think this year is about new, building new business opportunity and building really focusing on royalty as a whole, as a customer, as uh, just everything, every aspect of that business. You know, what's the biggest news that we've got coming out of 2020 right now? Multiple locations. And the app. And the app, that's gonna yeah. change the game. It is. I've spent invested a ton, a ton, a ton of time and money on the app. But uh, anyways, to get straight to the point, Mario and I are here at uh, the Boulder City Airport where we've created one of the largest opportunities royalty seen yet. Now this is an official done deal and that's why I've waited so long. You guys have heard a lot about me and the airline project and that's still full force, full steam ahead, which is very difficult right now to basically get in front of the FAA and get all this stuff approved. But one thing has gone down and we're here to show you. It's super exciting. So let's walk into this hangar, Mario, and show them exactly what we've got going on. Exactly. Be really nice. And then obviously the top part, you can make that black probably. Yeah, like and, a, and the like same type this piece right you here. All you know? these things. See, these inserts would all be that diamond stitched with the Yeah, yeah, orange, up here for maybe. sure, absolutely. In, in the inserts, this would all be black instead of the brown. So what I think we'll, we'll do is we'll maybe that's we'll replicate like, what we... It's identical to your, your... The Hummer. Hummer. I think we'll replicate the Hummer and we'll, we'll do a black, you know, center section yep. with a full orange outside, yep. you know, and it'll look probably really, really nice. Do you think yeah. we can get orange seatbelts? Oh, yeah, I think you can get any color you want. So this is one of the five-star helicopters that they currently have, right? This is the uh, the current chopper in operation. It's an Airbus. It's a gorgeous chopper. They have a silver with black logo. So the one that we're going to show you uh, is this is conceptualizing the idea. So this is not what we're going to have on ours, but uh, here <sighs> we're basically going. Let me just sit here. It'll be easier for me to show it. Um, you have these brown seats. They have like a white and brown look. I love this look. It looks really cool. It's very classy, but that's not the royalty look. So we need to get this royalty look down and I want to mimic the Hummer interior with a black body, obviously in a gold lion, because that's going to be our trademark airspace, uh, which all black. Now, yes, it's going to be hot in the summer, but man, you know what? It just looks so sexy. So it just takes a couple extra seconds for it to cool down. Inside, we're gonna do all the frame will be black, which will be super dope. And we'll have orange panels through here that'll have that bright, vibrant, just beautiful color orange with the black diamond stitching in it. And uh, through the seats, I would love to see if we can get some sort of carbon floor, black wood, something along those lines. Um, that's what me and David were talking about now. And uh, I think it's gonna be really, really, really cool. This is gonna be one of the newest built helicopters in operation in Las Vegas. And um, right now they're taking it apart over uh, in the engine room. So let's go check that out. You know, this being our 
third aircraft together now we have completely overhauled every component or we've replaced it with new so where we have the engine and the gearbox up through here the engine is completely overhauled through the manufacturer Safran takes a great uh, care to that and then we have our end our gearbox is overhauled to fresh the heads themselves have to be completely replaced with new why and is that just because when you they, uh, you know start fresh you have to do something with the FAA no this is typically just an overhaul requirement so every amount of certain hours these units are literally thrown away even though they look new so as soon as one of these things have flown for 3,000 hours they're thrown away and a new part is replaced. Now quite often they never jive and work time and time, so you don't have to replace all of them at the same time, but in this particular case, because we're trying to showcase this aircraft, we did decide to replace every part with new, and the units that came off this for time, we just put to another aircraft to fly there. So yeah, they top. can get a little bit extra use on it. Exactly. That, that's the benefit of having multiple aircraft, right? Absolutely. You get to use you know parts. If you only have one, then you're kind of screwed. That's right, know? that's right. Um, so, so having these, the whole work. The last it's time new. I was here, you explained to me that I, I can't even repeat it. So like, obviously this is a big ass turbo, right? Yeah, you're flying almost 700 horsepower to the main rotor blades and it goes off back to the small blade itself. And the small blade, the tail rotor blade, it's just used for direction of the actual body. Mm -hmm. It's just taking care of the body. But that horsepower that's coming off of here is literally being produced by this section right here. And that's it. And this part, this is your power. So all the power is coming literally from this portion of, of the engine, and uh, so that's like a that's like a transmission, or the, like a the transmission is all down in here. The gears are down in here, and they go to the forward transmission, and you have almost seventy thousand RPM of rotational speed here. They I mean, brought down to 300 and 60, 300, 390. 390, 393. Wow! So it does bring that uh, RPM down a lot. The reason they bring that speed down and it turns at 393 is the tips of the blades dictate how fast this thing can turn. You do not want to exceed the speed of sound with a with a blade. If you do, you create zero lift and the aircraft will fly. It's so incredible how like I mean, now we have so much technology, but imagine when the first helicopter was made. You know, like you think like how do they make this thing? The like first, how do they think of that? The first engine Whittle put out. He didn't have a regulator here on the fuel control. So as this thing spun faster, it literally pulled more fuel into the engine. It just kept going and going and, and going. as more fuel came in, it spun faster. They ended up putting flyweights in later because his engine actually exploded. It kept him pulling in more fuel. And more finally, fuel. literally just spun up and exploded. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's just insane. We're not going to explode any engines in the air. Thank God it's 2020. Uh, but uh, this right here, obviously all black, it's super sleek compared to the silver I mean it's literally side by side you can just totally tell the difference I mean personally I'd rather get into the black helicopter because it just looks like more it's classy it just looks fancier right and um, you know when we put a big huge lion on the side of this right here it's gonna be just like out of, I mean it's gonna look so ridiculously out of control I just think it's gonna be amazing you know uh, inside the, all the choppers are about the same you know cabin space right so you have, uh, I mean, obviously the communication equipment and all the, what is it called? What's the whole like uh, setup called? This particular one has an uh, electronic instrument package to it. Um, it's the only one that has it. So this is full, this is like the, the best of the instruments you guys have. Oh yeah, this is an incredible set of instrumentation. So this, here, this chopper is gonna be the nicest one in the fleet. It'll have the most avionics on it, that's for sure. So it'll be the best one. It will. That's amazing. Absolutely. It'll be the coolest and the best one. Definitely. So in the in this sec, we're gonna go with the same uh, seats, right? Like the same actual uh, same setup. configuration. Same configuration. So it's six seats, right? In the pilot. It'll be six in the pilot, four in the back. Yep. And, you'll and then have two up two front. At the front. And um, yeah, it'll be decked out with complete leather and stitch. And it's gonna be so cool. It'll be. Like, you know, you just cool. can't really. When you look at it from like from where you take it to this, and even in a 50% stage to this, it just looks so insane. It's just so small. Like you think, look how small the space is, but then it becomes so big with all that stuff in it. I mean, just the wiring and all the, just how detailed everything is, is amazing. We well, have this, which is gonna be really high end, and then you've got this one here, it's gonna be utility, utility configured. It takes the hoist, it lifts, 
and you can tell just all you're doing is you're putting people that are going to go up to the forest and they're going to jump out of this thing like it's a truck. That's crazy. You know. So David's building another one. Uh, he, this is his business, right? He builds helicopters for a living, and uh, you know ma you maintain them and all the rest of the stuff. So this is the same helicopter model or no? It is. It is. Look at the difference. So what are the terms and like regulations for doing open door? Like tour? Well, the just... only the only restriction that you have for an open door is the speed of the aircraft. You don't have a height restriction. You don't have a floor restriction. It's literally the speed. So, so in like regular tour operation, if your clients want to open the door, they could at, at a certain speed? They couldn't, but you could have the doors open for them, yes. Yes. You would I'd uh, probably rather just keep the doors closed. It's it's much <laughs> safer to have the closed. Just feels safer, looks safer. And have just the bigger windows. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just do really big windows. <laughs> that sounds insane. Yeah. No, it is fantastic. And then Oh, look at that. Sure you put enough fuel in That's a tank fuel tank. Wow. How, how many gallons? So, like, is there a, a distance traveled for use of fuel calculation, like miles per gallon in a car? There, there is. You, you fly approximately 45 knots per gallon of fuel. This one here holds how far about is a knot? 1.15 miles. This thing gets really good fuel efficiency, then. It's getting like 32 miles a gallon. It does. It's a 143 gallon tank. So, so you can go to California fuel. and back on one tank. More. Uh, if you could fuel once. Yeah, you do one fuel. If you have a hundred gallons of gas or fuel, right, you can go like Absolutely. Three yeah, three hundred and something miles. Well no, three thousand miles. And then right? the restriction that you have to it is the weight of the aircraft. So oh, yeah. although you can put this with 143 gallons, you pretty much be flying solo. Sure, that makes sense. Every gallon weighs approximately. That's why you need to refuel. Pounds. Yeah. So, yeah, 100 gallons is another 1,000 pounds that you've got. So what do you normally fill these up with? How many gallons when you're going on a tour about, or doing something like that? About 50 gallons. 50? Yeah, so out of the half. 130? You do about a half, 30, 30 to 40 percent of the tank. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And so you guys go to the Grand Canyon and back on obviously the same tank fuel? Yes. Because how far is yes. the Grand Canyon from here? It's an hour flight. Well, it's actually about a 40-minute flight, actually. 42-minute okay. flight. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. It's really, really, really cool. And so, you know, you take a look at the normal aircraft like this one here, configured the way we want to configure it. You'll have approximately 250 pounds a person that you could put into this aircraft and fuel it and fly all night long. Should you wanted to do, say, strip tours? Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. That's the idea, right? I mean, so that's going to be the, the base of the business. It is. Is for this particular helicopter to go up and down the strip all the time. Because that's kind of like the bread and butter. Yep. Right? Going to the Grand Canyon is really cool, but that's kind of like what you guys do out here, where, you know, that's the whole different business model, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then we would, I guess, we'd replace this floor with some carbon fiber looking. And. The reason this it's actually a little more difficult sometimes is all yeah. the product yeah. you put remember inside you have to be fire retardant, Mr. fire Kraft. resistant. Makes sense. So we just need to make sure that the product that's so what gonna look do you go like when you buy the flooring, like, right? This looks like regular know, flooring uh, to me from a house. When you go and buy this flooring, it, do you so have to buy it from an aircraft flooring store, or do you can you just go and make sure it has a, a burn rating and you could just cut it up to yourself at like Home Depot? Most people do just buy it from that aviation store, the but there is a surface that you can play, apply to this <laughs> that will give you your burn rating. And yeah. You can do that easy enough for sure. That's really, really cool. Yeah. See if it works. Loss of words, right? All right, so Tony just got here. Actually, I just I just got back to the office. I, I wanted to kind of like end the video by talking with Tony at the office because, like, I just showed them the helicopter. I showed them all the stuff, okay. and it's just so cool. Like, not only you're gonna be able to drive like royalty, you get to fly, get to like, fly royalty. like royalty, and it's so exciting. So this year, I'm gonna focus less on hypercars, which is really cool. I mean, hypercars are great, but whatever. It's hard to get like, away from it's hard, but like we'll keep we'll keep one. But I don't think I need to have like three anymore, so we can have like helicopter, airplane, 
all the new stuff. So we're gonna take you on the process of the royalty helicopter build. And it's probably only gonna be like two videos because it's pretty much already done. I don't know anything about helicopter engines. David's doing the thing. David owns that whole facility where you do all the new helicopter stuff. And David's an owner in five-star helicopter that's gonna help us operate this helicopter because it's not that easy just to get in and get going, right? You need a partner in that. So we're gonna get out there and probably fly in, in the next, I don't know, maybe 45, it could be less than 45 yeah. days. The, the chopper itself will be completely ready within the next three weeks. Yep. And they're gonna start doing their test maintenance flights next week. So I'll take you guys along and we'll do the best we can. And then literally you're gonna walk through these doors right here and you're gonna get in a chopper just down the street. And it's gonna be so freaking sick because it's gonna have orange, the best, part, the, gold. the best part about it is you get not only to jump out of a royalty car or however you want to do it, even if you don't want a car. You can take the you, car you, to the helicopter. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even think about you that. Get, you literally get a touch of the automotive side and then you get to jump in and go flying with us. So you got the best car experience you could ever have, not only in Las Vegas, but in the world. And then you get to just jump on an, on an aircraft and you get to go fly with us. Exactly. And that's just going to lead in to our hospitality, right? The royalty hospitality is going to be eventually the royalty hospitality group. Like it's going to be a really cool that thing. So cool. It does sound so cool. It just shows that look, I put a lot of effort and Tony puts a lot of effort into making every customer's experience oh, yeah. just remarkable, right? There's just, you cannot go anywhere and get a Lamborghini or get a Ferrari or get a car any which way possible like us. We are just, we are the best at it period. And now we're going to show you how we're going to be the best at it in the helicopters. And then we're gonna eventually get into the, the next part, which would be the fixed wing operation. Yep. And that is honestly, you guys see, when I get the bird in the air with the helicopter, that's step one, well, all right? They've seen the plans for that. The plans are Yeah, yeah, the, the royalty there, transportation but, oh, plans are all the way back there. Two years ago, a year and a half ago, I started this project <laughs> and we're getting so damn close. So uh, without further ado, welcome to the Royalty Hospitality.